Today is Friday, and in two more days, we'll be observing Gaur Purnima. So my thought was to do a little warm-up. Sachikmar and Premachrangani already saw this. This is a, um, a preliminary to Gaur Purnima. On the screen here, Lord Chaitanya in the dancing pose. Because Gaur Purnima is the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And just a little bit of preview. And I hope it works. Okay. This is a painting during the British period of the area where the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was during the British period. It's very different today, but this would look like then. It's along the bank of the Ganges. And we principally know <coughs> about what Chaitanya because he inaugurated the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's our normal um, way of describing him. And the, bi the biography about his life, the principal biography about his life, is Chaitanya Charitamrita. You familiar with that a little bit? Yes? Chaitanya Charitamrita. Very good. I'll be making some references from another. There's several. Chaitanya Bhagwat is another. Chaitanya Bhagwat was written quite some time before Chaitanya Charitamrita. Chaitanya Bhagwat's author was Vrindavan Das Thakur. And it said about him that just as Vyasadeva was the biographer of Krishna's life, Vrindavan Das Thakur is the biographer, the Vyasadeva of Lord Chaitanya's life. Vrindavan Das Thakur, according to his biography, he never directly met Lord Chaitanya because he was very young. Uh, he was maybe three years old when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left this world. And when he left this world, it was in Puri. So he was still in Mamgachi, which is a, a place in Navadweep area. But uh, his mother, who you heard a lot about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from, directly had experience of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And as he was growing up and became a young man, he had access to the diary of a dear associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu named Murari Gupta. Murari Gupta, by trade, was a physician. And by his nature, he was very devoted to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the residence of Murari Gupta and the residence of Lord Chaitanya's parents was like in their backyard, very, very close. Not exactly that close, but very close. And so Murari Gupta had lots and lots and lots of first-hand experience and kept a very meticulous diary, devotional diary, and of Lord Chaitanya and his childhood, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because he was a little older. So the the first of the principal biographers was Vrindavan Das Thakur. Much later came Krishna Das Paviraj, who wrote Chaitanya Charitamrita. And there's others, Chaitanya Mangala, etc. Very comprehensive uh, descriptions of his, his teachings, his loving exchanges, etc. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, the author, Krishna Das Kaviraj, was very learned. And he, Krishna Das Kaviraj, his main source of information 
on the life of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu was too, was he had a copy of the diary of Sarup Damadar. Who was Sarup Damadar? Sarup Damadar was one of the two most intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya in Jagannath Puri. So for the later half of Lord Chaitanya's life, Sarup Damadar, intimate associate, kept a diary. He had a copy of that diary. And he had the person who had first an experience of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes in the form of Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami was younger. He was one of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan because after Mahaprabhu's departure, he went to Vrindavan. And under the order of Rupa Goswami every day, for three to four hours every day, he simply recited the teachings in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. And in that audience was Krishna's Kaviraj. So the diary of Sukhdamadar and hearing from Raghunath Das. Raghunath Das had as his teacher, his guide, his spiritual caretaker, Sukhdamadar. <laughs> so they had shared information, and Sukhdamadar had an understanding of the inner feelings the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a state of ecstasy. You know, what he was thinking, what he was feeling, as well as what he was doing. And so that combination, plus Krishna Prabhupada by his character, was vastly learned and still an excellent writer. I was asking somebody who's Bengali speaking to help me understand some things from Chaitanya Charitamrita, and they said it's like Sanskrit. Oh, that's Bengali. It's very high Bengali. Is Sanskrit like Bengali? And I don't know the difference, but they do. And they were having some difficulty giving me, you know, a very proper and clear translation. So, Krishna Dattaviraj, the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita, wrote, there were purposes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance, and three of them in his language, they're external, meaning visible to the world, and the other three were internal or concealed or his personal purposes for appearing in this world. So the first of those three comes like this. This is a cover of Bhagavad Gita. And in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is directly speaking, giving instructions to Arjuna. And the essence of those instructions is to take full shelter of Krishna and gaze at his unalloyed service. 1866 Bhagavad Gita. Dharmam Prithyaja Mam ekam sharanam. Mam ekam sharanam. To take full shelter and surrender to Krishna. Principal instruction. So, <clears throat> after Krishna's departure, Krishna, according to Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna was considering, now that Kali Yuga has begun, when Krishna departed, it marked almost the end of Dwarka Yuga and the beginning of Kali Yuga and there's this juncture of time. So Krishna is, Krishna is contemplating how will people of this age understand Bhagavad Gita's message? Because they have don't have very much credential. They're very unfortunate persons and becoming more and more and more and more unfortunate. Something needs to be done to help them. So we began to consider what can be done to help them understand and apply, live by this message. And he considered the best is I could send someone, but at best is I come myself. And I can teach how to live by and how to apply the teachings of Bhagavad Gita in one's life. And that was an external reason. And the external reason is supported by these two verses 
in chapter 4 of Bhagavad Gita. Yada yadahi dharmasya klanir bhavati bharata apyutanam adharmasya tradatmanam surajamiham. Surajamiham means I, I manifest myself. Suraji, um, I appear. <coughs> when there's adharma, and to restore dharma, I come. And there, this next verse, three things. Again, dharma samstha. But prithanaya sadhu nam vinashaya shaduskritam dharma samstha panartaya tapavami yuge yuge. So, to give protection to the sadhus, to diminish the influence of the duskritis, and to restore dharma, dharma samstha. Sambhavami yuge yuge. So this is the first external reason to give the teachings and the practical example of the message of Bhagavad Gita, how to live it and apply it. The second explanation is the yuga dharma. This little slide shows for each of the four yugas, the process recommended, most recommended, for achieving spiritual perfection. So in Satya Yuga, Dhyayate, meditation. And during the Yuga of Brahmachandra, Treta Yuga, the performance of Yajna. And in the Yuga of Krishna, the Dwarpa Yuga, Deity worship or Archana. And those same three have some efficacy in Kali Yuga, but they're alone, standing alone, they're, they're not sufficient, so therefore the essence, which is included in all the other three Yugas, does primary focus on the chanting of the holy name, Harinam. So he, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, came to manifest the Stang Kirtan movement, or the Yuga Dharma, here is a verse that supports that from the 12th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Krite, that's the Satya Yuga, Krite Yuga, same word, Jayate or Jayato, Vishnu, meditation on Vishnu. Chaita Yuga, Yajato, the performance of sacrifice, Makai. And Dwapa Yuga, Paricharyam. This is Paricharyam. This is the Deity worship process and in Kali Yuga, Hari Kirtana. Or the translation, BBT translation. Whatever result was obtained in Satya Yuga by meditating on Vishnu, in Treta Yuga by performing sacrifices, in Dvarpa Yuga by serving the Lord's lotus feet, can be obtained in Kali Yuga simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra or Hare Kirtan. So those are two reasons, to restore Dharma, the, the teaching of what is to be done, what's not to be done, proper conduct, etc. The laws given by God, people should follow. The Yoga Dharma and Krishna Varnam, this is another verse from the 11th canto, essentially saying the same thing. That Krishna Varnam, that he who is in the category of Krishna, Krishna Varnam, Trisha Krishna, who is not Krishna, he's not blackish like Krishna, he descends with his Sangha, Upangas, and Astras, and Parshadas. He descends with his Here we go at the bottom. Associates, servants, weapons, and confidential companions. His astras. His astras were his redundant cartels. Yagyai sankirtana prayaya yajanti hi samedha. So that's the same Yuga Dharma reason. This section, Canto 11, Chapter 5, this is a section where 
um, Karabhajana Muni is giving an explanation to King Nili about the forms of the Lord during the different yugas. The yuga avatar forms of the Lord during the different yugas. So it's the same giving the yuga dharma. Second reason, external. And the third reason that he points out, Krishna Das Kaviraj points out, is Advaita Charya's loud calling. It's, it's mentioned both in Chaitanya Bhagavatam and in Chaitanya Charitamrita, but Advaita Charya was elder. He saw the deterioration of the sage of Kali, plus he knew scripture well enough to know it's going to get worse, it's not going to get better. And he wanted to do something. Sim something similar to what Vyas, who saw the age of Kali was coming, and so he wanted to compile the Vedas. Advaita Acharya saw Kali Yuga was already happening and getting worse, he wanted to do something. So his something was what you show in this picture. He, knowing the scripture, considered a certain verse in the Upanishads that says the Supreme Lord can be satisfied and fulfill the desires of the worshiper simply by being offered palmfuls of water and tulsi buds or tulsi manjaris. And so by the side of the Ganges, with his Shalagam Shira, he did exactly that. Palmfuls of Ganges water and Shalagam Shira was offered tulsi manjaris. And in a loud voice, he was calling in mantra, of course, calling for the Supreme Lord to descend, to become, to make this debating age uplifted. So that's the third external reason. Later, <clears throat> both in Chaitanya Bhagavad and Chaitanya Charitamya, but Chaitanya personally confirms hearing the loud calling of the voice of the great Acharya appeared in this world, that he's moved, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is moved by his dear devotees. He reciprocates with the love and the feelings of his dear devotees, a great Acharya being one, very, very dear. And so that's the third external reason for his appearance. So again, to restore the principles of Dharma, what the sage of Kali, to give the Yuga Dharma specific means for achieving spiritual perfection, and the Dwaita Charya is calling him to appear. And then Chaitanya Charitamrita goes on to describe that there's three internal reasons. And the internal reason has to do with the fact that Krishna pictured here in its threefold bending form and Radha are eternally manifest in two forms, although combined they're one entity. The sentence of the verse says Ekatma, Eka Atma, Ekatmana a people be for they the day of the Tao Here's the first line. Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikritir, Ladini Shakti Asma, who is Radharani? Radharani is the manifestation of Krishna's Aladini Shakti or his pleasure potency. So, although these two, Radha Krishna, are um, Ekat Manav Api, although they're one entity, they're Pura Deha Beda. Katauta, one entity eternally manifest in two forms. However, here's the second line. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying Krishna himself, Krishna Swarupam, the last line, Krishna's own form, uh, but he's in the bhava and the duty or the ecstasy and the luster of Radha, Krishna himself, in the mood and the complexion of Radha. 
So there's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who's Radha and Krishna manifest in two forms. In the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Radha and Krishna manifest in one form, the one entity, like Shakti and Shakti Man, or the sun and the sunshine, the energetic and the energy, Radha being the spiritual energy, the pleasure potency of Krishna and Krishna, with two forms but one entity. So here's the two aspects of the personality of God had manifest in one form, in the complexion of Radha and the mood of Radha, the bhava of Radha, but Krishna himself. And there's a nice little graphic you can see I like that one. This is a little graphic that shows the internal mood and the external manifestation of Krishna appearing in the mood of Radha. It is said this painting, that the first painting that's Lord Chaitanya, was crafted or created by an artist, consigned artist, to depict what Lord Chaitanya actually looked like. At least it's said about that particular painting. So Radha, in the mood of Radha, and the luster of Radha, but in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, with this com combined feature. And in Chaitanya Bhagavat, just to make it a little bit more clear, the very second verse of the entire book, so Adi Leela, chapter 1, verse number 2, it describes the Shaktis, that we already indicated one Shakti, that's not any Shakti, the pleasure potency of Krishna. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also has his Shaktis, or he married, when he was younger, he married Lakshmi Priya, according to this verse in Chaitanya Bhagavad. She is Sri Shakti, or the goddess of fortune, Sri like Lakshmi Narayan, or the Sri feature of this Lord's spiritual potency. She died once when in separation from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, she couldn't be, bear her life. He had gone some distance for some number of days and she literally gave up her life. His mother, Mother Sachi, then made a request. Please accept a second wife or click it. So an arrangement was made that his second wife would be Vishnu Priya, who according to Chaitanya Bhagavad is Bhu Shakti. Just like in Sri Vaishnavism, that they have commonly a principal deity, like here, this is the deity of Sri Ranga, Rangana. And there in the front is the Utsav Murti, and on the either side of Utsav Murti are Sri Bhushakis. In the same way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had two wives, Sri and Bhu, or Lakshmi Priya and Vishnu Priya. And this third energy, there's more than three, but the third primary energy is Nila Shakti, or Leela Shakti, or the spiritual Durga, from whom the worldly Durga, Goddess Durga, comes, or is a manifestation. So that's a little description of who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In Srimad Bhagavatam, in one purport, here's the following explanation. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's first wife died, his mother requested him to marry for a second time. He was 20 years old and was going to take sannyas at the age of 24. Yet, by the quest of his mother, he married, saying, as long as I am in household life, 
I must have a wife, for household life does not mean staying in a house. Real household life means living in a house with a wife. Now, question. Can you think of any avatar or form of the Lord who took sannyas, leaving his shakti, his spouse, his wife, alone? And just so when when he when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, he was twenty four. And his wife was 16, because in Vedic times, young girls would marry early. And commonly, they would stay with Prabhupada describes that they would stay at the home of their mother and father. They knew who they were going to be married, which is just like an engagement. They were married. But the young girl didn't live with the husband. She lived with her parents when she was really young. And once a year on the day of his birthday, she would cook something and bring something. And he would think, oh, she's such a good cook. And some attachment would develop in a slow, 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 gradual way. So she and her mind would know who her husband is. He and his mind would know who his wife is. But she, when Vishnu Priya was still very young, she was not ready to be living with her husband, so she lived at home. When she turned teenage, she turned 14. She moved into the house where Sachi and her, her husband lived. At that time, he was a brahmana, a teacher, a school teacher, named Nimai. Nimai Pandit, Pandit because he was a teacher. So it's unusual, and it's a little, it's a little mysterious. In fact, how is it that Shakti can be disconnected from Shakti Man? Doesn't sound right. How can the energy of the sun be separated from the sun? Can't. You don't find sun shine without the sun. So how is it? Is this a mystery? And we'll discuss it a little bit. But the, if you remember, the third potency is the Holy Dham, Nila Shakti. We'll go back. Nila Shakti or Nila Shakti or Durga, that's the abode. So the abode of the Supreme Lord is Navadweep. And Navadweep manifests the, the abode, the place in which. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared and the place where he conducted his childhood pastimes, you know, for, for the first half of his life. He traveled sometimes, but he, his home was Navadweep. So the biographers describe it as being the crest jewel of all holy places. Now, as we know, the abodes of the Lord have their spiritual counterpart, just like Ayodhya. There's Ayodhya. You can go to Ayodhya. There's a train station. You can visit the city of Ayodhya. And it's a copy or it's a external, it's a manifestation of the eternal Ayodhya, the spiritual sky. In Krishna's pastimes, there's an eternal spiritual sky, Goloka Vrindavan. And there's the, the earthly Vrindavan. But that earthly Vrindavan is literally, not just figuratively, but literally not different than the eternal mode of Krishna in the spiritual world. And similarly, the eternal mode of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is called Svetadvipa. And where is Sweet to be located? According to Sri Brahma Samhita, Sweet to is a quadrant, one of the sections of Krishna Loka. 
in the spiritual world, there's Vaikuntha planets. The topmost of Vaikuntha planets is Ayodhya. It's called topmost of the Vaikuntha planets because there's an intimacy in Ayodhya that doesn't exist in Vaikuntha. Does Narayana have a mother and father? Narayana doesn't have a mother and father. And Ayodhya, does Ramachandra have a mother and father? Yes. Does Narayan help have brothers? No brothers. But in Ayodhya, in the spiritual sky, Ramachandra has brothers. Three brothers. There's four of them. Same as in this realm, in the spiritual realm. In other words, etc., etc., etc. There's more intimate dealings than the formality of awe and veneration that exist in Vaikuntha. The residents of Vaikuntha simply look up. There's no looking sideways as peers or brothers. So when Ramchandra was brother, the other brothers looked up to him. Besides, he was the oldest brother. But he was the oldest brother to Lakshman by one day. Because they had different mothers. But so, it, so it wasn't just by birth, it was by Ava. They regarded him as their the worshipable master and lived their lives accordingly. Anyway, Ayodhya has greater intimacy than the Vaikuntha planets, but it's part of that same realm of Hari Dham. The boat of Hari. And above Hari Dham is Goloka Dham. And within Goloka Dham, there's quadrants or there's sections where manifestations of the source of everything reside. And one of those areas in Goloka is not Sweta Dweep. Sweta Dweep. But that part of Goloka, Sweta means white, Dweep means island. It's that part of Goloka known as Sweta Dweep, where eternally both Chaitanya exists and his associates live. And then there's the Sweta Dweep or Nava Dweep within the material realm, but it's not material any more than Ayodhya or Vrindavan are material, they're not material. They're in the material world, but they're not material. That's why the holy places. And in Navadvip, we'll hear a little bit why Navadvip is considered the crest jewel among so many jewels that are like holy places, that are like jewels, that are holy places. Prior to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance, he, um, the mother and father of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted a son. That's what Brahmanas often want a son to carry on the duties of the father, etc., and take care of the wife in her old age. They had eight daughters first, and the eight daughters one after the next, after the next, died very young, very, very young. Eventually they had a son, his name was Vishvarup, and the father, Jagannath Mishra, was his father's name. This is a deity of Vishnu that he worshipped, a Hoksaja Vishnu deity that he personally worshipped long, long ago. And with prayers, and so forth and so on, the procedures that Brahmanas undergo to receive a qualified son. On the full moon day, which is in two days, the Purnima, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. And it wasn't just a full moon, it was a full lunar eclipse. And on the occasion of a full lunar eclipse, there's a tradition, a scriptural injunction, but people in Bengal followed it very carefully and enthusiastically. And that is, as the, the moon eclipse is occurring, they immerse themselves half 
in the Ganges water and all loudly call out the names of Hari because prior to and other than that particular circumstance, they weren't so inclined. They were in Navadri, there was a seek of high learning, but there were more jnanis than bhaktas. And jnanis are not well known for lots of chanting. But jnanis know, according to scripture, what do you do when there's a lunar eclipse? You call up the names of Hari. I, I happened to be in Mayapur one year when there was a full lunar eclipse at Kodima. And go to Kodima. Let me tell you what it was like. It, I, I felt it was very unsafe, besides wild. Somebody sent me, and I forwarded it to you, a scene in Vrindavan recently on Holy. The crowds went for miles just wall-to-wall -wall people. There were a lot of people at the temple for this opening, but they weren't pushing. In Vrindavan, they push. In Bengal, they don't even bother to, you know, they just... Because there's a short window of time to get into the Ganges, half a verse of water, and there's a million people. I mean, where the temple is in my form, it's not heavy, it's not urban at all. It's the so people are coming from all over the place. Zillions. That's a lot of it's more than millions and billions, but zillions. All wanting to take back at the same time the Ganges. I thought this is really dangerous. Oh, I didn't do it. <laughs> and the Bengalis, you can't say no. I don't even speak Bengali. But you can't say no anyways. Push and push and push and push. So like that, they at the appearance day of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, during the lunar eclipse, everyone was calling out the name of Hari very loudly at that very time, calling loudly the name of Hari. That's when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. During the lunar eclipse. Whenever you want to call the name of the Lord. And in the course of his pastimes, because he's Hadi, he's Krishna himself, wanting to experience three things. These are internal reasons for Mahaprabhu's appearance. He wanted to experience the love that Radha has for him. The happiness that she feels in her love for him. And the third is the qualities in him that she sees and how she sees the qualities in him that stimulate that love. Then Krishna, according to Krishna Das Kaviraj, Krishna began to consider, what is that love that Radha feels for me? I'm the all-powerful supreme. There's nothing I can't do except this one. I can't, one has to be in the position of the subject regarding the object of love, but I'm the object of love. How can I regard the object of love from the position of being the object? I have to enter into the mode of the subject. Radha's love for me will be possible, known by me possibly if I adopt the mood of love, of Radha. So he came to teach the external how to apply the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. But the internal is, in the mood of Radha, what is that love that Radha feels as she's serving me? With the happiness, three, these three, the happiness she feels in that love. And the third, the qualities in me is called Udipan, stimulations of love, stimulations of ecstatic love. That's the qualities of Krishna. What are the qualities that she sees in me that stimulate that love in her? I'll only know if I accept the mood of Radha, although I'm Krishna myself. And so the many nice 
Any things that help us understand this regarding self view. Here's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and in his, his thoughts, he's seeing the happiness of Krishna with Radha, but the view is from the mood of Radha, with Radha's expansions, because according to Chaitanya Charitamrita, Radha expands in different, 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 different ways. Radha expands. She expands, for example, in unlimited numbers of gopis, principal and gopi assistants, but unlimited numbers of gopis. As Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj says, megabytes and megabytes, Dina Bhandu, megabytes and megabytes of gopi expansions. The queens, there are also expansions of Radha. The goddesses of fortune in Vaikuntha realm, the expansions of Radha. Sita Devi, expansion of Radha. All the Shaktis are expansions of Shakti Mat. And, and Shakti, the principal Shakti is Radha. So she expands for the pleasure of Krishna. That's what pleasure problem she does. She expands the pleasure of Krishna. So that's this painting. Uh, later on, we just fast forward a whole bunch. Later on, as he was living the life of a teacher, his, his main field of teaching was Vyakrana or Sanskrit grammar which may seem kind of elementary, he was, he was the big you know, grammar teacher. But it is said that grammar of Vyakrana is the doorway into the wisdom of the Vedas, say negatively. Without proper understanding of grammar, you can't understand the mystery of the Vedas. And to, and, and to understand the rules of grammar, there has to be also, a system of nyaya or logic when this this root word is connected with that word, what's the meaning, and then another meaning, and another meaning, and another meaning. A kind of poetic expression of understanding the Sanskrit. And over and over and over again, he, would, he began teaching. And at a certain point in time, by Leela, he became inspired to receive Diksha from a spiritual master because a good Brahmin boy can do his studies, but he needs formal Diksha. And so on the occasion of going to Daya for the purpose of performing the Shraddha ceremony for his departed father, there he met his Diksha Guru, his Diksha Guru he had met earlier, it's an earlier pastime. Ishwara Puri visited Navadrip and there was an exchange between them, etc., etc. It happened that Ishwara Puri was in Daya. When he went to do his the ritual for Shraddha for his father. And in the course of sitting with Ishwara Puri, again hearing this Krishna Kata, he made this request to please accept me as a new disciple and give me mantra. So that was done. You know, mantra in that particular stage of Vaishnavism, he received Gayatri mantra, specifically Gopal mantra. So it's a mantra glorifying the different features of. Krishna. And when he left Gaya, he stayed for some days with each reporting, serving him and hearing from him, etc. And then with the, the, there's some details. With the students, he went back with permission of each reporting, he went back to Navadweep. But he was transformed from that Diksha experience. He, his attraction for Krishna just exploded. And he couldn't really 
get into being a Sanskrit teacher, a grammar teacher. So what he did was he developed a system of training all the rules for Sanskrit grammar with names of Hari. Hari Vyakrana. It's called. And his students didn't like it. They were accustomed to the old Be My Pandit. Now he's behaving differently. And they started complaining, you know, amongst each other. Of course, he found out complaining. And then, as his mood of the love for Krishna that's experienced by the gopis, he would sometimes, in the days, start calling out gopi, gopi, gopi. One of the brazen students started criticizing him. What's this gopi, gopi, gopi? What are you doing? You think this was to teach us grammar. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu picked up a stick and shook the stick and said, Get it out of here. And then the boys took exception. Who do you think he is shaking a stick at a, at a Brahmin? Let's retaliate. We'll get back at him. And as he was hearing this kind of talk was going on, because he talked like that, it was back to the person you're talking about, he decided now is the time for me to enter sannyas. Be this, that which I'm not so much inclined to do anyway, teach Sanskrit grammar, and let me dive more deeply into the mood of love for Krishna than not happens. So he took sannyas. There's a long description of this in both Chaitanya Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita. And in the course of time, there's a lot of gap I'm not covering, but he had a very strong impact on a sannyasi named Prakashananda Saraswati. And in Benares, they met, long story short, the painting shows this sannyasi, Prakashananda Saraswati, had thousands of sannyasi's students. And they were speaking badly about this devotee who had taken sannyas in this Shankara line. Isn't studying Vedanta Sutra like the rest of us. He's going out with common people, singing and dancing, which sannyasis aren't supposed to do. Hang out with common people, forget it. Singing and dancing with common people, forget it. Study Vedanta Sutra, that's what he should do. But he's not doing that. He doesn't come and associate with it. No. Ram, 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 ram. So finally, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at the appeal of his devotees in Benares, please do something. So he agreed to pay them a visit. The painting shows when he went to pay them a visit, they were having a big assembly in a hall. And he bathed his feet, as was the culture at the time. There's a pitcher of water and a bowl, and he poured the water from feet into the bowl. And then after bathing his feet, he sat down in the, bath in the foot bathing area, which is not clean. So Prakashan and the Saraswati saw this humility and came out, and as you see the gestures, please come. You know, I'm not fit to be with all of you, you're so elevated. And conversation, 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 of course, it came to a discussion about bhakti and the true meaning of Vedanta Sutra. And very interesting. Very interesting. Here's another bas relief sculpture. You see the thousands of the sannyas disciples in the background, so by their interactions 
according to Chaitanya Charitamrita, it wasn't like instantly, but in the course of their interactions, Prakashana and Saraswati became very moved by the, 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 this qualities of this young sannyasi, the beauty of this young sannyasi, and the wisdom of this young sannyasi, and the teaching of bhakti that, they, that he heard from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he, the sannyasi among sannyasis, became a, a bhakta, became a devotee. And when he became a devotee, all those other sannyasis you see in the background, they also became, they were his followers. So they became bhaktas also, devotees of the Lord. There are five sections in Chaitanya Charitamrita that are principally based on teachings. There's many sections in pastimes of Lila, Goro Lila. But five sections are teaching sections, and this is one. His discussion with the passion of the Sarasvati. And another is a discussion between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a 24 year old young sannyasi in his discussion with Sarvabhu about the Charya. Long story about the life of Sarvabhu about the Charya, but he, he had the title of about the Charya because he was most learned. Acharya. The king of the whole district that uh, with, it extended way up into Orissa and all the way down to Chennai. That was the king kingdom, the big kingdom, much more than today's Orissa and the south southern parts of Bengal. He requested Sarvabhu Bhattacharya to be his chief priest because he was Sarvabhu, he was so scholarly. And it so happened that Sarvabhu similarly had a, a background of strongly influenced by Shankaracharya's teachings. But he was so learned he understood outside of that field. Long story short, when when Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya met this young sannyasi, he said, you're, you're so, you're just 24. And your features, your bodily features are so beautiful. How are you going to maintain your sannyas as a young man like this? If you like, I can help give you protection by teaching you Vedanta Sutra. I know how to do it. I do it thousands of other sannyasis. So if you like, I volunteer. So Nimai Pandit, well, now Sri Krishna Chaitanya is a sannyasi. He accepted the invitation. Seven days into the night, next day, next day, next day, he, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu simply sat and listened. And Shantan and Sarvam Bhattacharya spoke. But he's a professor. Professors can speak a long time sometimes. Seven days. And at the end of the seventh day, the eighth morning, Sarvam Bhattacharya said, You don't say anything. And I don't understand if you're grasping what my teachings are or not. Please let me know. And Young Sanyasi said, I understand Vedanta Sutra very well, but as you speak, you're covering the meaning more and more. Oh, really? If you understand Vedanta Sutra, then you please explain Vedanta Sutra as you understand it. And the explanation, this is another teaching section. Lord Chaitanya's teachings to Sarvabhu Bhattacharya. His explanation is so profound. Sarvabhuma said, I've never heard anything like this before. Then further questions and further questions and further questions. And because he's super scholar, Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, he saw the light and he became very clear to him that this person is not just a learned sannyasi, 
with the personality of God in himself. But there's this nice prayer that when we offer our prayers, so it's simply succession, it's this one that we offer to Lord Chaitanya. Namo Mahabhadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Nandi Gaur Trishe Namaha. And Prabhupada's translation. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, who is more magnanimous than any other avatar, even Krishna himself, because he is bestowing freely what no one else has ever given. Pure love for Krishna, he just freely gives. Krishna Prima Pradayate, his gifts. When these exchanges got to a certain point with, between Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, a little light went on, saying, you're not just elevated sannyasi, you're the first knowing of Godhead. Mildly smiling, but Chaitanya shows his form. There are different explanations. He shows his form of Krishna and Vasudeva form on form. And Tarapuma Bhattacharya fainted. But he intuitively understood through devotion, and then Lord Chaitanya revealed his form. According to Chaitanya Bhagavad, a six armed form, meaning two arms of Krishna holding flute, two arms of Ramachandra holding bow and arrow, and two arms of a sannyasi carrying. The Danda and Kamandalo, O one part, six armed form, Sadbuja is called. There's a deity, a Sadbuja deity in the house of Sarabhul Bhattacharya. According to the history, it's exactly where Vajitanya showed that form to Sarabhul Bhattacharya. These are two examples of the teaching sections. There's three more because of circumstances. I'm not going to get go into all of all of the details. You can read Chaitanya Chaitanya for the details. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inaugurated the Yuga Dharma. He did so with Lord Nityananda when he was in Navadweep. He did so through chanting and dancing. Long description of that. The place of his birth in Navadri is pictured here. This is a temple that was built by Bhakti Siddhanta, Prabhupada's spiritual master. And by the side of that temple, there's a, there's a, an altar. We'll see parts of the altar in a moment. Near that altar, there's the place where he was born. There's a murti of Sai Mother Sachi with a child on her lap, Jagannath Mishra, her husband, mother and father. And here's the, some very nice pastimes found in both of these biographies of his childhood pastimes. So, this is a little introduction. Now, the schedule at the temple got changed a few. Times. The latest schedule, it may change again. The latest schedule is tomorrow at 12 30 is the first RT for the deities. 12 30, then they are to because the deities have now moved. And then uh, two of us, Nutma and I, are supposed to say something for three minutes. So can you have our script, what we're supposed to say? He's going to say of the history of Ra Ra, and I'm going to say, first of Madan Mohan, the worshipful deity of Sanatana Goswami in three minutes. And then she's going to say something, and the fundraiser is going to say something. That's tomorrow, between 12.30 and I guess 1.30. Because I'm going to keep it short. And then I'm supposed to go to the 
new, excuse me, the old temple all and speak something for an hour. I think it's three o'clock. So I'm going to speak about Sanatana Goswami because the deity of Sanatana Goswami was Mother Mohan by name, the deity of Mother Mohan. Thank you. Thank you. And then Sunday morning is Maha Abhishek, seven o'clock. So that's going to be interesting. There's so many problems there. Too many. And they don't always agree with each other. They've seen. But they're not a fellows. So Maha Abhishek in the morning. And then I'm being asked to give an afternoon a second class. So it's just a schedule for tomorrow. And I wanted to speak something about Maharaj Pratapa because he was the king at the time that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was living in the Puri. And you know, fascinating, a fascinating exchange between Lord Chaitanya and the king, the mercy shown to the king. Very interesting. And then tomorrow evening, I'm been invited to go to the Baltimore Temple. They're going to do something else here at the temple. Don't know exactly what, but it's all planned. So that little coming attractions for the next two days. So this is just a little preliminary to the appearance of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is officially on Sunday, and the plan going back and under the Dhamma wanted to have the opening sooner. There was complications, it couldn't happen sooner, so it became the Lord Pradima weekend. So that's, well, that's why many, many of that's why I'm here, because of the temple opening and to observe Lord Pradima, both in the Tome and in Baltimore. And there's a lot of devotees from all over the place, just like I'm from Alasha, but another devotee from Fort Lauderdale and some somebody from Seattle, Washington. Devotee couple. Because she's the um, deity worship minister. So she came with her husband. And there's lots of other people from all over the place, plus people that have had some past here in Potomac, including some of your friends who couldn't make it because of simultaneous events. Any discussion on Rajitanya Mahaprabhu, particularly? Yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj. That was uh, uh, very good learning, uh, happy, um, on going into the God of Purnima. <laughs> Just a warm up. <clears throat> so, um, uh, my question is about uh, uh, what you uh, spoke about Bhakti and Jnana. Uh, so, you, you refer to people who had. Uh, who were kind of knowledgeable but not having of the yes. and, and and also uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who, who was not really so much into the knowledge per se but he had the most elevated form of Bhakti. He had all the knowledge. Yeah. yeah. And he displayed it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And in his Leela he, his bhakti awakened to the association of each report. I mean, there were other bhaktas all over the place, but, but Navadvip, I, I, I know I'm hitting the target of what you want to hear, 
Navadvipa is a seat of higher learning, which means many people were very knowledgeable in the Vedas. They were at least Gyanis. Many of them were demigod worshippers with, with substantial knowledge of procedures and rituals. And so they were, the karma kind of thing was prevalent. Gyana was prevalent. Bhakti was there, but not as prevalent. And then he, when he received the seed of Bhakti from Ishwar Puri, and exploded. And he started performing kirtan publicly and so forth and so on and so on. So the second time seed was given to him by Ishwar Puri, but it's past time because he came for that purpose anyways. Yeah. So the, here's a nice verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. The nice verse, the translation says that through the process of bhakti, unalloyed bhakti, causelessly knowledge and detachment awaken. There's no need for separate cultivation of knowledge because through bhakti, knowledge and detachment awaken or they arise spontaneously, naturally. So there's still study of scripture, but the study of scripture is for the purpose of nourishing bhakti, not for the purpose of acquiring again. Somebody may have a, most people have a mix, some bhakti, a mix of interest in gyan. But the unmixed bhakti is what Lord Chaitanya wanted to give, and that is bhakti for the sake of study of scripture for the sake of nourishing bhakti, bhakti for the sake of bhakti, not for the sake of gyan. Now, during his time, before he, his same kirtan process, it largely in that part of India, lots of learned fellows that were Ghanis or demigod worshippers, religious, but not at the mature stage yet. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah I think uh, it, it, it really it touched so much about what I wanted to ask you, Maharaj. Um, one more clarification I wanted to seek from you rather the direction is. Um, is knowledge um, a prerequisite to bhakti? No. Knowledge awakens through bhakti. Vasudevi, Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga, Prayojitaha, Jani Ati Asho, Vairagyam Jnana Chayad Ahitukam. A high to come without cause. Hate is cause and a hate is without cause. Without cause, knowledge and detachment arise because commonly pursuit of gyan is assisted by detachment or not knowledge. Gyana vairagya are a couple of invading texts. They go together, two pieces in one pot, jnana vairagya. Where jnana rises, vairagya rises, or affinity for material enjoyment diminishes. Vairagya. Jnana vairagya. And the bhakti is bhakti vairagya, or bhakti engaging in, in devotional service, yukta vairagya. Is the phrase that's used. Yukta means engaging stuff or matter or resources or whatever somebody might think is an object for enjoyment. Engage it in Krishna's service. Yukta Vairagya, detachment by bhakti. So bhakti is the medium for knowledge that's covered by illusion to be revealed. Because the covering becomes removed through bhakti, and the knowledge becomes revealed, and detachment follows. So back to your question: Is is knowledge a prerequisite? 
The answer is no. Because knowledge is already there within. Bhakti is already within. And when bhakti awakens, knowledge is manifest. So, so when, when, let's say, for example, somebody's a new person. We encourage them to read Bhagavad Gita. It's not for purpose of acquiring knowledge. It's for purpose of nourishing bhakti. Now, there's, certainly there's knowledge. But the purpose is nourishing bhakti. To nourish bhakti, you have to, A, B, C, you have to have a distinction, this is knowledge, distinction between the covering of the soul and the soul. The body and the mind are coverings, and that's not who we are. It's knowledge. But knowledge for the purpose of awakening bhakti. So the intention or the purpose behind is very important. Generally speaking, people call the big knowledge for knowledge's sake. Or the sense of now I know and therefore some pride in knowing and some detachment along with pride, detachment from worldliness, but another kind of subtle enjoyment that's also worldly, which is pride. Pride of an educated, intelligent person. It's common. For persons who are intelligent to be also proud, proud of their acquired knowledge. When 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 bhakti awakens through the approaching bhakti or scriptural messages with a different mood and purpose, so that the intention behind it is so important, then that knowledge that awakens helps one become very humble. Back to your question. Is knowledge a prerequisite? No. Then what's the prerequisite? Just be a spirit soul. That's pretty much everybody. What about this? What about that? Just be a spirit soul because the covering can become cleansed by bhakti. You have that covering, whatever it you know, might be. You're the soul. And by hearing, hearing and hearing, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, by hearing and hearing, Bhakti awakens. Knowledge awakens when Bhakti awakens. Transcendental knowledge awakens. Not the information only kind, but transcendental knowledge awakens. Who am I? No prerequisite. This be a spirit soul. And then hear from the right sources. That's important. That takes intelligence. Don't hear from other sources, hear from the right source. Now, how do I discern this intelligence? This discerning who do I hear from and who shouldn't I hear from? That's a discerning intelligence capacity. Scripture gives us direction where to go to here, and where to not go on here. And why? We're conditioned souls, we have tendencies. I like to hear or something or something, you know, because of our condition. Therefore, it generally takes some time of repeated hearing from the right source. And it added, added, along with the eagerness that I want to know. But, that's, but it's not to know just for knowledge for knowledge's sake. It's want to know who I am. And life's purpose, as opposed to life's purpose is fill in the blank. Enjoy material resources. Develop, develop a skill by which I can get material resources and enjoy the material resources. Um, one little about that is, yeah, but that detachment is incomplete because what's mine to give up? It all belongs to somebody else anyways. And who's that somebody else? 
the source of everything is the good everything but what everything belongs to or to whom everything belongs does that take a while because we're conditioned or attached to a material conception there's no prerequisite just here from the right source you can know, with this, with the inquisitive spirit of want to know from a jigyasa and then try to apply that which you've heard and understood so it's not just information it's just not a stop it's information it's that life devotion unto the source of everything Sometimes Prabhupada would speak about this topic to social, socially concerned individuals and sometimes to scholars. You know, same thing, but he was giving examples. Many of my followers, they were addicted to, you know, simple activities. And they're no longer doing those simple activities. How is that possible? They didn't have vast knowledge, they didn't know anything about Krishna. But look at look at the lifestyle. So it's at the hearing and the inquisitiveness. Then he would say, even in Africa, or us or small children, you come to the temple and see the small children. Even a child can dance and sing and hear and chant and become purified. No. That's the process and, and how effective the process is in part depends on how sincere one is to inquire as one goes on hearing. But the potency is there. Purifying potency is there. Travanam Kirtana Vishnu Smaranam. Yeah. Raj, one of the reasons that Rajatana gives is to show the example of you know devoting. Yeah. And I was just wondering, like when he was like he was here 48 years, mm. 24 years, household life. 24 sannyas and of the 24 in you know, six and six like six with association of the body six out in your travel mm -hmm. all the travels and freedom yeah. but then 12 years of stay in Bambina and like a transcendental intoxication yeah. yeah I'm just wondering is there are we to draw some Lesson. Lessons in terms of the proportion of how many years he's, you know, he did different things and. Not, I, I, that's not my understanding. My understanding, you know, what, what he did those last 12 years was off the charts. It's not to be imitated. No. More standard is, you know, 25, 25, 25, 25. It's not, you know, what Lord Chaitanya did. 25 in student life, 25 in household life, 25 in retired from Nirvana Prashta life. And, you know, when there's to be 75 plus, then Sanyas like when you're a quarter, quarter, quarter. That's the general picture. And what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did is not to guide us in how to divide, you know, sections of our life. Mm -hmm. Anything from our host here? Oh.
So, uh, you asked the question about what is there any other avatar who took sannyas leaving the point behind? What's the significance of that question? That might it's been, well, it was, I presented it on the screen as a mystery. As a mystery. Because did he have to do that? And if he didn't have to do that, why did he do that? He didn't have to do that. He, he could have lived his life as others do and take Vanaprastha before taking sannyas. And you know, at, at a stage where there were children to look after his wife or boys, you know, for a brown male, he gives his wife a son. So the son can look after. So, but he didn't do that. He didn't do that. So, you know, it, I'm not sure. You, yeah, I raised the question because it's a mystery. That I didn't necessarily try to be looking for. You know, why did they do it? Is the answer to that mystery? Is that what you're asking? No, uh, that was one part. The second part of this is my immediate thought went to the Ram and Sita. Sita was separated at least for a year, was snatched away from the yeah. star Ram. Yes. How does this, is this a companion? Yeah, there's, there's, there's something similar, but not the same. Yeah. Lakshmana also. There's, there's six options. Yeah. And there's six opulences of Bhagavan. You're familiar. And one of them is renunciation. So, in both, they're exhibiting the pastime of renunciation, at least when Ram gave up Sita because of the village talk. Although he's omniscient and she had already proven herself as being pure. It's a, he, you know, there's different, different ways of understanding why he did it. There's a whole seminar just on that one topic. So, it's not just a quick, you know, why did Ramchandra? Send sheets away. There's multiple layers. But, you know, one of the I one of the bhagas of Bhagavan is renunciation. So he was exhibiting that bhaga, you know, and the moralists may say that wasn't right. And, you know, people may say whatever they want to say, but it, it was a factor. That at least in, in you know Ram Chandra that had a golden murti, a seat of faith by his side, and when he ruled Ayodhya, it was a seat by his side. And there was the Leela of her entering back into the earth from which she came. It's you know, it, it's a it's a Leela. It's not so much a lesson, it's a mis mysterious Leela. Just a, it's a detail. According to the commentators on Borovila, Vishnu Priya is the same as Sita. That is, Vishnu Priya is Bhushakti, and Sita is Bhushakti. Not she came from the earth and went back into the earth. That's not Bhushakti. Bhushbo is the earth. She came from the earth and she went back. But that so the earth is her is Bhushakti's expansion. And it's just a leva to indicate something about the Lord's pastimes. And her attachment for him, for Ram, was spotless. Vishnu <coughs> Priya's attachment for Mahaprabhu was spotless. There's a there's a detail that we covered in the Lanshua. She was given a deity of Mahaprabhu to worship when she was 16 until she was 90. She worshipped that deity every day in a very extreme way. So it's just a vela of reciprocation with his own spiritual potency. 
in the board of separation, love and separation. That didn't have to be that way, that didn't have to be that way. We, we, or it worked out that way, we chose it to be that way for a variety of reasons. It's not that you know we're meant to follow that that as an example because he did it, so we should leave our wife when she's 16 or something. It's a good one. If, the, if, if love and separation, that's a, a big part of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching. So now going up, going on to when he did take sannyas, because we've heard in the last Twenty-four minus six. Huh? Right. Well, yeah. Last twelve years, he was in the state of madness. He wasn't in any, any shape to take care of life. <laughs> he went this went into the depths of madness. In the mood of Radha's love, the Christian. Tasting her love. There was another dimension of his gift to the world, showing what that love of Radha and the position of Krishna himself. It's a, it's a, it's a part of his reason. And if you use Mitchell Yarsik, you're not going to get the essence. So then the why, why do we do it? He had a mission to get that love of Radha for Krishna. And it was, it was amazing. Read Chaitanya read Chaitanya Chaitanya, you'll see how amazing. Very amazing. Did that address your question? No. Yeah? Okay. You have something? Yes. Okay. I guess, Prabhupada Krishna, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Sarada Mahaprabhu, that's the sentiment teaching. And then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught chanting of the Holy Name to the love of God. Yeah. And in one of the lectures, Prabhupada says, both are same. Which are the same? Sarada Mahaprabhu, and chanting of the Holy Name. Well, they're the same and different. Because one is mood and the other is, is an action, but the action of chanting with that mood, leaving aside all other ambitions and taking one, now they come. Chanting. They go together in that sense, oneness, but they're different. They're not identical, I percent like it. They have the same transfer platform. Carrying the same mood and this like let's say when Krishna spoke Dharma Dharma Krishna, was a different yoga, wasn't the chanting of the Holy Name. Before that, in Rama Chandra, you know, the previous yoga. And Sri Vaishnavas call that verse from Bhagavad Gita the Charma Sloka, the essence sloka of Bhagavad Gita. So they have a different, they're, they're not advocating, as Mahaprabhu advocated, chanting of the own name. But the principle of the principle of taking full shanti, and that's the essence of, of bhakti life. So now back to the, they're the same. But the chanting of Hare Krishna is a, it's the primary means of expressing or exhibiting that full surrender. The chanting of Hare Krishna leads to Sarada Mahaprabhu. They're they're compatible. They're it's one and different. You want a Venn diagram in? It's like a Venn diagram. But there, there's an overlapping, so they're, they're the same. They're not exactly the same because one can take full shelter of Krishna without chanting. One can engage in being worship, or one can engage in other activity without one activity exclusively. Mm -hmm. 